Earlier this week, we had Roger Simon of PJ Media on as a guest. He told us about the story that was coming out this week, a story about Martin Luther King Jr., and it's not a flattering one. He had written a piece about the piece that was coming out. Our guest today wrote the story. We'll get to him after the break. Uh, Roger Simon was a civil part in marches in the 60s and vouched for the credibility of the story when we had him on a couple of days ago. He's a conservative now and was as the founder of media. It's pretty as if the story uh, uh, that if the story you are going to hear in a few minutes was about Donald Trump instead of Martin Luther King, or if it was about Ronald Reagan or one of the George Bushes, it would be the lead story on MSNBC, CNN, and Fox. It would be talked about for days. It would definitely be the big headline at the Drudge Report, but I just checked, and it still hasn't made it there, and as far as I know, they're not talking about it on the cable networks at all. This is a story that includes Martin Luther King being involved in orgies, being in the same hotel room while another minister is raping a woman, all recorded by writer. His name is David Garrow. He's a Pittsburgh guy, a former professor, a history professor at Pitt. He wrote a biography of Martin Luther King back in 1986 called Bearing the Cross, and he won a Pulitzer Prize for it. He's a liberal. Most of the media seem to be afraid to touch this story. Not here. We're going to talk to him when we come back. And now, it's time for The Jerk of the Week, starring John Steigerwald. Well, we had some good candidates this week. I considered the guy who sat in fuel level seats with his four-year-old daughter who ended up getting hit by a lot. The two black women who made a website uh, called Race to Dinner. They invite white women to uh, dinner so they can be yelled at for being white supremacists. But I'm going to go with Jesse Smollett. He could have made it a long time ago, but we weren't doing Jerk of the Week back then. But the Chicago cops released 500 pages of documents the other day that include transcripts of recordings that sound like Jesse was buying drugs and some other stuff. The cops had search warrants. They were out looking all over for the people who beat Jesse up. Turney was never going to prosecute. She's a jerk, too, by the way. Could have, could have probably given her the award, but Jussie still hasn't admitted to doing it, so that makes him the Jerk of the Week, a well-deserving recipient and a long-deserving recipient of the Beef Jerky Outlet Jerk of the Week Award, Jussie Smollett. The Jerk of the Week is brought to you by Beef Jerky Outlet, Tanger Outlets Washington, and Grove City Outlets. With over 100 varieties, there's one to satisfy the jerk in your life. Visit BeefJerkyOutlets.com. And remember, don't be a jerk. We're talking to Rocky Blyer. He's involved with the Miracle League of Moon Township and the construction of a Miracle League athletic field. The fields are designed to make it possible for kids with special needs to play sports. Every child, no matter what the situation, deserves a chance to be able to play, to compete, and have a place that's safe, takes care of needs, that's organized. This will be the four a Miracle League field that will be built. Now we got four places to be able to travel, and so it broadens the whole interest of sports. It's just terrific for a community to do that. There's a buddy system I thought was pretty impressive. What's that all about? Kids with special needs have a buddy, a, a child who's in school. It's like having an older brother or sister involved with you, so it's really good in that everybody has human dignity of being able to participate. The website is miraclesinmoon.org. Check it out and let's help make this dream a reality. Hey, Rocky, thanks. And uh, we'll talk hey. again about this project. Appreciate you coming on to talk about it. Thank you for having me. All right, man. Take it, it easy. Thanks. Rocky Blyer, right, and we'll be right back. If you're an employer, a business owner, if you have five to 100 employees, listen up. The cost of doing business continues to skyrocket, strangling your HR department with more regulations, administrative duties, and liability than ever. I'm John Steigerwald. Your health plan's a big part of that cost. Another year, another 10% rate hike, another $1,000 increase on your deductible, another hospital or doctor you can't go to because they're not in the network. Isn't it time for a change? Well, stop the insanity and call Marley Financial, the most innovative agency in the industry. Put an end to the annual increase. Give your employees a national network that all hospitals accept and reduce your monthly premiums by 20 to 30%. It doesn't matter when your renewal is. Marley can help today. Call 724-884-1496. Marley Financial, 724-884-1496. 724-884-1496. Maybe you'd like to know what exactly Relief Factor is. It was created. 
Plus. It's a 100% drug-free supplement with four key ingredients that simply help your own body deal with the natural inflammatory response that it has. It's easy to swallow, four little capsules in each packet, like the packet that I carry with me at all times. Three packets a day for a week, then two packets a day for two weeks, and I have just described the three-week quick start. And you will know in three weeks, that's the beauty of it, whether it works, they don't drag you on. That costs just $19.95. There's a very good chance that a very serious percentage of my listeners suffer from some sort of muscular or joint pain. You should try this for $19.95. That's all you can lose. If it works, they will send it to you automatically. If it doesn't work, tell them not to send any shipments. And it's as simple as that. It is all at relieffactor.com. I've been using it for years now. Relieffactor.com. G'day. I'm Scott from Plugin Pest Free. I want to personally thank all my Plugin Pest Free customers who have taken the time out to call, write, and who have left messages to thank me for ridding their homes and businesses of unwanted rodent and pest problems. So from me to you, I thank you. Plug-in Pest Free is the only scientifically tested and, more importantly, consumer-proven electromagnetic pest management system since 1995. Why put up with those annoying rodents and pests any longer? Plug-in Pest Free is 100% chemical-free, making it your safest bet to manage your rodent and pest problems around your family and pets. With a 60-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So order yours today at gopestfree.com. Use promo code SAVE20 for 20% off and free shipping. That's gopestfree.com, promo code SAVE20. Don't spray and regret, plug in and forget. Gopestfree.com today. This is the John Steigerwald Show on AM 1250, The Answer. The headline of the story is The Troubling Legacy of Martin Luther King. It was written by a former Pitt history professor, and as of right now, it's probably getting more attention in Europe than it is here. But if you read it, it'll change the way you think about Martin Luther King forever, and it might make you rethink the FBI, too. David Garrow is the writer. He joins us now. Dave, thanks for being here. Certainly. So before we get into what you reported, um, it probably would help to, to, to mention that you uh, wrote a Pulitzer Prize winning book about Martin Luther King in 1986 called Bearing the Cross. Uh, what can you tell us about that book, the tenor of it, and you know, just your approach to Martin Luther King when you wrote that? I started my work on that book in 1978, just after my first book on the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was published. Um, and before I completed Bearing the Cross, this big biography of, of Dr. King, um, I also wrote a book uh, called The FBI and Martin Luther King, just on uh, uh, the FBI's uh, harassment of him. Uh, that book was notable for exposing three important informants uh, targeted against King and his friends. Uh, but bearing the cross, my, my big biography, uh, I think was very notable, uh, not only because I was able to interview, you know, all of Dr. King's uh, surviving friends and colleagues, uh, selfish, uh, indeed self-sacrificing figure he was, uh, someone who did not at all desire to be a famous public figure. Uh, he felt very uncomfortable in the role. Uh, and indeed, the uh, FBI wiretap material that I first uh, obtained in the early 1980s from the wiretaps on, on three of his close friends uh, show over and over again, uh, you know, ironically, they make him look great. Um, humble, self-critical, uh, someone who never gloried in, in receiving big prizes and, and honors, a, a deeply impressive man. And uh, bordering on saintly is, is, is the image that he has or had, uh, uh, maybe not quite saintly, but he, he was considered a holy man, maybe with some flaws, and there has been talk about you know, there had been talk about his uh, maybe extramarital affairs, but nothing like what you uh, expose in this story at Standpoint Magazine. So did your opinion of him change when you came across this information that you have in the people? One in D.C., 
Uh, and that's not all that different than, say, John F. Kennedy uh, as right. a senator and, and president. Um, this new material um, shows us that King was uh, more uh, uh, active in, in uh, multiple, multiple relationships with women, uh, right from 1963 on uh, to his death. someone supposedly associated with Donald Trump, uh, just how incredibly invasive electronic surveillance is. It picks up and memorializes for all time everything that's, that's happening in a person's life. Well, now, just the stuff that you uh, that you became aware of with all the, uh, the mistresses and, and the Dorothy Cotton and all that, did that get into your? Is that in your bearing the book called Bearing the Cross, or did you just feel that that was not necessary for what you were doing there? There is some of that in there, though. I didn't use Dorothy's name or the names of of any of the women. Mm -hmm. um, Dorothy passed away just coming up on a year ago, um, and all of us in in King World, as I call it, who knew her. We all respected her wish to to not be publicly identified as as the real wife. Um, but now that that she's deceased, and and with these documents uh, out there in public, I mean the National Archives, uh, roughly about a year ago, very quietly put up on on the internet um, hundreds and hundreds of documents uh, that identified Dorothy, oh, three dozen or more times, uh, identify the other girlfriends by name. Uh, and so I, I made the, the decision, and I understand from all of my professional colleagues uh, that it's, it's a decision they all concur in, uh, that once the, the U.S. National Archives uh, puts these materials out in public where anyone with an Internet connection can, you know, click and, and read them, uh, that as a you know professional scholar and and biographer, um, you know I have to uh, you know confront and and acknowledge that 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 material is out there in public. And Dave, would you call yourself a liberal politically? Oh, oh, very much so. I I for many years was an official member of of Democratic Socialists of America. Um, I'm not one at present. Um, I donated to uh, Bernie Sanders uh, four years ago. Um, uh, I, I'm, I certainly think of myself as a democratic socialist. Uh, uh, I'm very impressed with former Congressman uh, John Delaney uh, among the current uh, democratic presidential uh, hopefuls. Okay, so I, I think you know why I'm asking you that, because... Um the credibility on this whole thing is uh, some of it would be uh, harder to achieve if you were known as a flame-throwing conservative, but that's the farthest thing from what you are. Exactly, John. So from what I understand, you had a lot of trouble finding someone to publish the story that came out in Standpoint magazine in the U.K. Uh, is that true and why? Oh, very, very much true. Now, it is a 7,800-word piece. It's right. eight full magazine pages. I read Standpoint. it all. Yeah, it's Standpoint great. Standpoint has been superb. Mm -hmm. uh, now, here in the U.S., I mean, some outlets, I think, uh, declined to pursue it uh, in, in large part because of the length. Um, I had some uh, of the very liberal left magazine, The Nation, uh, where one editor was extremely enthusiastic about the piece didn't think they could run run it at full length and and I I did not want to cut it I I think it's it's richness of detail is is extremely important for the historical record uh, but some other outlets uh, uh, clearly the Guardian uh, British based uh, liberal paper um, were uncomfortable uh, with the fact that some of it is is very salacious uh, material um, and because that's what the FBI was doing, and, and that's what King's life uh, entailed. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, U.S. publishing has, has really shrunk, uh, both newspapers and magazines. Um, 
and uh, you know it, it's a more difficult world for for serious nonfiction journalism now than it was uh, uh, fifteen or twenty years ago. And you, you want to tell people where they can find the piece now? Oh, happily, John. And the online version is standpointmag dot co c o dot u k, uh, like United Kingdom. Okay. Uh, the PDF. Uh, the PDF. Of, of the eight-page article itself uh, is also on my personal web page, which is just David Garrow, G-A-R-R-O-W, dot com. Okay, now, what was was um, your difficulty in getting it to be published, and, and also uh, the, the um, fact that it's just not seen anywhere right now? I mean, this is something that you would think the Drudge Report would pick up, uh, I, as far as 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 we're talking now, I haven't seen it there yet. Uh, so, was it more the subject matter or concern about the credibility of your sources that that uh, maybe got people to back off, or was it both? I don't think there's been any uh, concern whatsoever uh, about the uh, reliability of of the source material. Um, I had editor after editor tell me how impressed they were with the piece. Uh, the editor in chief of the New York Times Magazine, for one, I've I've got his email to me telling me uh, how how impressive uh, a work of uh, investigatory scholarship it is. Uh, when people tell you something's you know not a fit for us. Uh, you know, you, I, any of uh, your listeners can, you know, scratch their heads at, at what that might mean. Uh, but I had a number of editors, uh, Esquire magazine, a, a wonderful man at the American Interest, uh, who said that they, they just didn't want to uh, court the uh, p- potential political controversy uh, of a piece that would be uh, taken by some people um, as as uh, uh, critical and and embarrassing uh, of Dr. King's legacy. Now it's obvious from your story that the FBI was out to get King and and discredit him, uh, but you obviously took that into account. Now, how skeptical were you going in, and how much of that skepticism went away as you did your research? And when I say skepticism, I'm talking about, you know, the um, the. A credibility of the transcripts from tapes that nobody has heard yet. At least, as far as I know, nobody's heard of them, heard them yet. Um, several quick points, John. Um, I've worked with with thousands and thousands of FBI documents for literally forty years now. Um, if it's a document based on a human informant, a human source, uh, you've got to be very careful, very cautious, because the a degree of exaggeration, inaccuracy in, in human sourcing is is uh, uh, almost constant. Uh, but with electronic surveillance documents, where they're listening in and recording, um, the accuracy rate is is honestly about ninety nine percent. I've read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages over the year of wiretap logs from the, the wiretaps on on. King's friends in New York that were released to me years ago. Um, and with this new material, uh, even with the, the tapes that remain under court seal until 2027, uh, we have a public Justice Department uh, Office of Professional Responsibility report uh, issued in early 1977, over 42 years ago, uh, where a team of five attorneys uh, publicly uh, certified uh, that they had listened to the tape, uh, they tapes, they had read the transcripts, and that everything in the transcripts was on the tapes. Uh, I interviewed four uh, Justice Department attorneys back in 1979, 1980, uh, for my 1981 book on the FBI and King, and those attorneys all uh, described to me how unpleasant. Uh, that re- recorded material was uh, containing Dr. King's voice. Uh, so I've known for a long time uh, that when 2027 comes, uh, it's going to be an, an unpleasant experience. Uh, but this past year, with the National Archives having put this sampling of summaries and quotations of describing that material out in public, 
uh, I felt I had no choice but to uh, put something out in public saying essentially, uh, hey folks, uh, we don't have it all yet, but uh, everyone should know that come 2027, uh, it's going to be an unpleasant reckoning, uh, as I say in, in the Standpoint magazine article. So what you write about in the piece at uh, Standpoint Mag, um, that is based on transcripts. But uh, why and why are we waiting until 2027 before we can hear the the actual tape, the audio? In 1977, a federal judge issued a, a, a unique, unprecedented uh, court seeking the. Uh, original recordings and the transcriptions uh, away from the FBI, uh, putting them under court seal, uh, for what was uh, honestly a, an attempt to protect uh, Coretta Scott King uh, from uh, public exposure of this material uh, so long as, as she was alive. Uh, that was obtained really by Mrs. King's lawyers. Okay, so and she's now she's now passed, but that's still going to hold yeah. till twenty. Brought that 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 legal action was brought in the name of a of a King aide, uh, a man I knew qu- quite well, Bernard Lee, um, whom himself passed away in uh, nineteen ninety, uh, and so with Bernard dead, uh, no one would have legal standing uh, to to uh, reopen uh, that case now or in twenty twenty seven. Uh, the most explosive story, and we're talking to Dave Garrow. He's uh, written a piece about Martin Luther King that is just uh, really amazing, and it's you can find it at um, um, standpointmag.co.uk. And we will be right back with Dave Garrow. Stick around. With SRN News, I'm Keith Peters in Washington. Planned Parenthood has been successful at keeping its only abortion clinic in Missouri open. A judge issued an order just before the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services that said it would not renew the clinic's license. Lila Rose of Live Action tells Salem Radio News the clinic has an extremely poor health record. This is a facility that's had over 70 medical emergencies at it. It is one that refuses to cooperate with state investigators. It has multiple health and safety violations, according to the state health department. So it's not only ending the lives of children in the womb, it's also putting women at risk. St. Louis Circuit Judge Michael Stelzer issued a temporary restraining order preventing Missouri from taking away the Stocks and options trading involves financial risk and is not suitable for all investors. Hey guys, it's Scott Bauer here, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy. Are you looking for a super hot stock tip? Here at Prosper, we are always looking for exciting opportunities in the markets. And right now, all my students are salivating over this stock we are watching. In fact, I've got this hot stock written down right here, and I'm about to text it to you. You need to know where to send it. Simply text HOT to 48542, and I'll text it to you instantly. How do I know this stock is so hot? Well, I'm a former CBOE market maker for Amazon Options, former vice president of Goldman Sachs, and I have over 25 years of professional trading experience. I'm telling you, this stock is hot. But be warned, the stock may move soon, so you need to claim it before it does. Text HOT to 48542, and I'll text you this hot stock instantly. Text HOT to 48542, and I'll text you this hot stock instantly. Message and data rates may apply. Joe Walsh has seen it all from the left. Christine Quinn is her name. Giving the Democrat view on abortion. When a woman gets pregnant, that is not a human being inside of her. It's part of her body. I- I've heard a lot. You heard her. It's not a human being. What? What is it then? A fish? What is it? A pineapple? The Joe Walsh Radio Program. Weeknights at 9. Right after Larry Elder at 7. On AM 1250. The Answer. Here is your new Pella Lifestyle window when open. Here it is, closed. The new Pella Lifestyle series is the number one performing wood window and patio door for sound control, energy efficiency, and value. Keep the outside noise outside. More peace and better rest for your family. Exceptional noise control for a quieter home. For a limited time, get 50% off installation and 12 months no payments, no interest. Call 888-77-PELLA. Pella Pittsburgh. 
Hunt & Hunt Associates is your resource for examining the important financial aspects for your retirement plan. Listen to our podcast radio show, Hunt for Retirement, by visiting gwhunt.com. On this week's edition of Hunt for Retirement, we discuss securing lifetime income. Text HUNT to 555-888 or visit gwhunt.com to listen to the podcast now or call 844-366-HUNT for a free copy of the book, Income Allocation and a free retirement income report. One in seven men is diagnosed with prostate cancer in his lifetime. The good news? When caught early, it can be treated. The bad? All treatment options have side effects like impotence, urinary leakage, and rectal Cleared and proven to help. Men receiving space or hydrogel were more likely to maintain their normal sexual very busy afternoon, heavy delays on northbound 79, Grand Avenue up to 19, outbound 28 volume delays from Veterans Bridge to the Highland Park Bridge. On the Parkway East, an accident cleared outbound at Edgewood Swissvale, but it is still very busy from Grand Street. That point, Parkway West slowing down inbound Carnegie to the Fort Pitt Tunnel. Volume delays on the Parkway North outbound from the Mount Neba Road overpass up to 79. That's a look at traffic. I'm Jenny Robinson. AM 1250, the answer, weather. Mainly clear tonight with a low of 58 for tomorrow, increasing clouds. A heavy gusty thunderstorm will be around later on in the afternoon and into the evening hours tomorrow night. High tomorrow, 80 degrees. Low tomorrow night, 59. Then for Sunday, clouds and breaks of sun. Breezy and noticeably cooler with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm. High Sunday, 69 degrees. With your Iraqi weather forecast, I'm meteorologist Danielle Niddle. You're listening to The John Steigerwald Show on AM 1250, The Answer. Finishing up here with uh, Dave Garrow. He wrote the story, uh, The Troubling Legacy of Martin Luther King. He did that for the magazine called Standpoint Mag, and we will talk to him some more right now. Let's get back to the explosive story in your piece describes a rape that King witnessed. He was in the same room at the time. Can you give us the details on that? Yes. Um, we've known for a long time that the first occasion on which the FBI uh, sent a squad of agents with hidden microphones and in that report it's, it's uh, typed out, and this is for clearly for internal FBI use because it has the long numerical uh, one of King's ministerial colleagues, uh, forcibly rapes a woman. And then Sullivan, who's making marginal uh, annotations to add and expand things, says that uh, King, you know, looked on, laughed, and offered advice. Now, Sullivan clearly had the transcript of of that recording uh, in front of him when he's doing this. But the more important point, John, um, this not only was allegedly a, a serious, forceful sexual assault uh, witnessed by King, uh, but also we've got two FBI agents in the you know, neighboring room uh, listening in in real time uh, as this serious sexual crime uh, occurs, and, and they do nothing. Um, you know, they don't. Um, and then we have this recording, you know, being transcribed, passed around FBI headquarters. Uh, you know, dozens of top officials see it. Um, I think what at bottom we see here is that both uh, black ministers and uh, a large number of, of FBI uh, personnel uh, in 1964 were equally complicit in the abuse of women. Uh, now, we know that John F. Kennedy is president in the White House, uh, a, a young intern to uh, perform a sex act on one of his friends. Uh, my very strong view is, is that the bottom line of, of this story uh, is about gender, not race, about how deep-seated and widespread uh, the mistreatment of women by, by powerful men uh, has been in this society, uh, not just in recent years, as we've all, but historically as well. And more more accepted in the '60s than it is now. I mean, it was never accepted. Oh yes. But, um, it, 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 but so you have Martin Luther King, who's Martin Luther King, and another Protestant minister, uh, a man of the cloth, raping a woman in the. 
and they're both in the same room, and Martin Luther King is um, giving him advice. Um, that, you know, we've had, uh, that's, uh, how does he survive that? How does his, well, how yeah. does image survive that? I mean. You know, the, the present, you know, information is, is an accusation, allegation. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, we won't, we won't have a, a clear verdict. Uh, until the act recording, uh, you know, Dr. King has a you know quite recognizable voice. Uh, until that actual tape recording becomes public in 2027. Now, in in that instance, and in and in other uh, similar though though not so troubling uh, group sexual uh, situations uh, that the FBI uh, followed, um, the the frank truth is that Dr. King was was almost always very drunk. Uh, he had a drinking problem. Well, now, you know, drunk, drunk again and again in, in my Standpoint article, uh, because I don't want to seem as if I'm uh, excusing uh, uh, male abuse of, of, of women uh, because the, the abusive man was, was heavily inebriated. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, the, but the private king uh, was a very troubled man. Um, you know, the burdens of his role, I mean, he, he didn't enjoy being a celebrity. Um, and I think where we're going to, you know, come out in the years ahead uh, is to realize that the, the personal toll, uh, the personal burden uh, that his public role uh, put upon him uh, was even more uh, uh, draining and, and damaging to him uh, than I realized uh, 30 years ago when uh, I wrote Bearing the Cross. And on one tape, King was heard saying, uh, he was calling one of his colleagues on the phone, and he said, get your damned ass down here. I have a beautiful white broad here. What was that all about? That's 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 just, uh, to, have, to hear Martin Luther King's voice on tape, I don't care if it's 2027 or 2097, that's going to shock a lot of people. That particular statement is is not uh, from an FBI recording. Uh, that's from a, an interview with a Las Vegas prostitute uh, that a, a Nevada uh, state official uh, conducted oh, okay. uh, right after the event. Uh, that that uh, La, that Las Vegas officer uh, uh, gave the prostitute's account uh, to the FBI, and the FBI then circulated it all over the U.S. government. Uh, but the uh, lady in question uh, uh, was hired uh, by a, a well-known black gospel singer of the 60s, Clara Ward, um, who, if anyone looks online, is identified as, as having been primarily lesbian. Uh, Ms. Ward was a friend of Dr. King, and it was Ms. Ward, uh, who was African-American, uh, that arranged for this white prostitute to, uh, shall we say, party with uh, her and Dr. King and uh, that ministerial colleague uh, whom whom King uh, uh, called upon to uh, uh, join the party. We're talking to Dave Garrow. He's uh, a former uh, history professor at Pitt, an author, and he's the writer of an article at uh, Standpoint Mag. Um, Luther King with some just um, explosive stuff in here. Um, are, are there credi- credible people who have seen these transcripts and heard the tapes who have vouched for the accuracy of the transcripts? I mean, you've gone over this, but uh, I know that when people hear this, a lot of them are going to just say, well, the FBI was out to get uh, Martin Luther King. Everybody knows that. And the, these people are not to be believed or it was exactly exaggerated. Um, you know, as I, as I mentioned briefly earlier, with the electronic recordings, uh, you know, those tapes still exist. Um, there were, you know, two sets of Justice Department attorneys back in the 1970s, before these materials were uh, taken away and put under court seal, um, who listened to all the tapes, reviewed all the transcripts. Um, you know, one of their reports is is public, saying that the transcripts are accurate. Uh, you know, the tapes are for real. Uh, you know, back in 1980, I spoke with four uh, of those attorneys. Uh, who told me uh, some of what they remembered hearing on those tapes. Uh, so I, for a long time, have, have had no doubt uh, that when those recordings are released, uh, it's going to be very problematic for people. Um, and this is not so much a question of, of the sounds of sexual activity. 
uh, it's, you know, Dr. King, uh, you know, quite drunk usually, uh, saying, uh, uh, you know, very unpleasant, offensive, nasty, uh, obscene things. Uh, and, and I think that's going to be the big challenge uh, for, for, you know, lots of Americans come 2027. Uh, you know, Dr. King in public was always a, a very disciplined, buttoned-down figure. Uh, you know, but in, in private, um, you know, drinking a lot, uh, you know, under a tremendous amount of stress, uh, you know, uh, many people close to him have, have said to me and to other King biographers uh, that, you know, he he needed, uh, you know, ways to relieve stress, ways to, uh, you know, uh, let off steam, Um you know, that's a, uh, you know, those are the sorts of comments that I've heard for many years now. Um, <clears throat> we have a few more minutes left here. Robert F. Kennedy signed off on the wiretapping. Uh, I was looking at the story a, a couple of weeks, actually, before JFK was assassinated in November of 63. Should we believe that it was actually to investigate King's uh, communist sympathies, or would he have reason to discredit him, too? Uh, Robert F. Kennedy uh, authorized the surveillance of King uh, because he, you know, Bobby, uh, believed King had essentially lied to him and his brother, the president, uh, about breaking off relations with a, a close advisor, a, a white lawyer in New York, Stanley Levison, uh, whom the FBI believed was a, a subversive influence on King. Now, Levison years earlier had indeed been a, a very important uh, Communist Party functionary, uh, but the FBI had no evidence at all that, that Levison was, uh, uh, in the 60s, uh, any sort of subversive influence on King. Uh, but they sold that story to, to Robert Kennedy. Yet, at the time when the FBI is, is getting Kennedy's uh, authorization, it already knows from the wiretaps on one of his friends uh, that King is having affairs with at least three women. The FBI's motive in, in getting uh, Kennedy's okay to wiretap King's home and King's office uh, is, is suspect right from the start. Uh, you know, they've, they've garnered nothing from wiretapping Mr. Levison about subversion. Uh, and they know that if they wiretap King himself, uh, what they're going to get is uh, a lot of raunchy information about his, his public life. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, Kennedy's authorization uh, made that snooping legal. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, you know, especially in, in recent times, I am deeply opposed to, uh, you know, FBI electronic surveillance of, of any American citizen, uh, you know, irrespective of their, their partisan preferences. Yeah, and just for the record, uh, I think the FBI comes out looking much worse than even Martin Luther King does in this story that you do. But Oh, exactly, uh, John. Yeah. Yes. So what happened, uh, we're getting down to the end here, I'm running out of time, I could talk to you a lot longer, but what happened when the FBI sent a package of uh, reel-to-reel tapes to King, and the quote was, uh, I guess it, uh, the note with the tapes was, you will find on the re record for all time audio evidence of your adulterous acts, your sexual orgies involving various evil playmate, playmates, and they gave him a, a, a date of when he should do something. The FBI's clear hope was that Dr. King would kill himself by Christmas Day, 1964. We've had a, a partially redacted versions of that letter before. This is the first time that a completely unredacted uh, version has been made public. Uh, but what's most new in, in, in this new material, John, uh, is the standard version of the story for years attributed the mailing of that package to William Sullivan alone. Uh, that Sullivan, the head of the intelligence division, did this all by himself. The new material makes quite clear that his three superiors in the FBI, Alan Belmont, Clyde Tolson, and J. Edgar Hoover, also authorized that mailing. Incriminating Hoover in the attempt to get King to commit suicide is, to my mind, important big news. Wow, it's, it's huge. And, um, and, what was it, I mean, was it a racial thing mostly, do you think? I know this is uh, conjecture, but 
Was it mostly a racial thing that, that you think had the FBI despising Martin Luther King because the fact that he was a minister, this the uh, the extracurricular stuff that he was doing out there is not all that not that shocking or important because he'd just be another guy. But what was it about him, aside from his blackness, that they hated so much? It's a complicated answer, John, because Hoover, Sullivan, and the FBI had close, friendly relationships with many black activists at that time. Thurgood Marshall, uh, before he became a Supreme Court justice, Roy Wilkins, head of the NAACP, Whitney Young, James Farmer, uh, the most famous black television preacher of those years, uh, Elder Solomon Michaud, a close friend of Hoover. Um, so, you know, it's, it's incorrect to say, oh, Hoover and the FBI were racists. Uh, no, they wanted to promote some black leaders whom they thought were reliable, uh, dependable. Uh, they were targeting someone like King, uh, targeting the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, both because they were more politic politically radical uh, and because, in King's case, uh, the, the paternalism of Sullivan and, and other FBI officials, uh, with a, a racial paternalism, uh, that they felt, they felt, you know, that, that King was too immoral uh, to be a, an influential public figure. Wow. Hey, Dave, I'm, I'm out of time. Um, I really appreciate it. One more time, tell us where they can find the, uh, the, the piece. Uh, and um, I really appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you, John. Either standpointmag.co.uk for the web version or for the eight-page PDF, my personal website, davidgarrow.com. Very good. Thank you, Dave, and I appreciate you being here. Thank you, John. Okay. We will be right back. Stick around. Okay, meat lovers, Beef Jerky Outlet presents over 100 delicious ways to get your snack on. There's nothing slim about these big flavors. This is high-end quality gourmet jerky in more flavors than you've ever thought possible. From wild game to pepper and spice to sweet and savory, there's something for everyone. Flavors like honey jalapeno, Cajun barbecue beef brisket, sweet bourbon traditional, Asian sesame, teriyaki, cherry maple, and peppercorn smoked beef, just to name a few. With Father's Day coming up, this is a total no-brainer for the guy in your life. Visit BeefJerkyOutlet.com for fabulous gift ideas. Plus, check out their phenomenal selection of rubs, sauces, and marinades. Beef Jerky Outlet at Tanger Outlets in Washington and their brand new Grove City Outlets. Beef Jerky Outlet, proud sponsor of the Jerk of the Week, heard every Friday right here on the John Stoggerwald Show. Check them out, beefjerkyoutlet.com. Are you about to pay double for new windows, siding, or doors? If you haven't called Windows R Us, you just might. Many companies are overcharging area homes and businesses and home remodeling, Windows R Us is more than a window company. They're the area's premier exterior replacement company for roofs, gutters, siding doors, and of course, windows. Windows R Us will never overcharge. You'll love their no-pressure approach, straightforward pricing, and the fastest turnaround in the business. Right now, get zero interest for 12 months and up to $20,000 on new vinyl, fiberglass, or wood windows. With options like triple-pane glass and names like Pella, no hidden fees or surprises ever. Your no loophole lifetime warranty covers everything, including glass breakage, at no additional cost. Mention AM 1250 with your free estimate for an exclusive 10% off. Why pay double? Visit the area's premier exterior replacement company, WindowsRUsPittsburgh.com. A couple of weeks ago, we had Rocky Blyer here to talk about his work with Miracle League in Moon Township. Fields for athletes with special needs. Jim Leland, the Pirates' former manager, is also involved in that project. Jim, thanks for being here. Great to be here, Jim. Tell me about the miracle. Volunteer and to help out and put a smile on the field that they put out.
or miracles in moon or we'll be right back what's inside your mattress affects its price comfort and durability but most mattress manufacturers won't show you what's inside their products because they simply don't want you to know how can you know you're getting the best value if you don't know how your mattress is made at the original mattress factory we believe that transparency is what's best for our customers so we have open displays of each model in our showroom so you can see and feel the difference in our products visit one of our local original mattress factory stores to see exactly what we're made of not so long ago, all mattresses had two sides, and for a good reason. You could flip two-sided mattresses regularly, making them last longer than one-sided mattresses. So, what happened to two-sided mattresses? In an effort to cut costs, most mattress manufacturers cut their mattresses in half. For nearly three decades, the original mattress factory has believed that building high-quality, two-sided mattresses is the right thing to do. Visit us in one of our stores or at OriginalMattress.com to see how our products are built right and built to last. This is the John Stackerwalt Show on AM 1250 and FM 92.5. The answer. So I spent the last couple of minutes looking to see if anybody had picked up the story that uh, Dave Garrow has written and uh, in the national media. Nothing on MSNBC, CNN, or Fox News uh, websites. Post-Gazette has a story uh, today uh, written by uh, Jillian Brockle. I'm just looking at it now. Um, and it, the headline is, Historians at Arrow's Martin Luther King allegations. Uh, down here it says, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, the to me. About that. Luther King and why he uh, found credibility in those transcripts. And he said that he spoke to people or there were people who heard the tapes and then compared what was on the tape to what was on the transcripts and they matched. So um, I don't know how much at Yale and Rutgers have done, but I'm sorry, I believe Dave Garrow. He worked hard on this piece. He's a guy who admired uh, uh, Martin Luther King. He's a liberal. He's not a conservative right-wing nut flamethrower, and he sounded awfully credible to me, and uh, I hope uh, you get your friends to check it out at, uh, John, at the johnstoggerwaldshow.com or on Twitter at Stoggerwald. YouTube, The Answer Pittsburgh, you can find it there. Check it out. I'll see you on Monday. Thanks, Darren Byrne. Great job getting that Dave Garrow thing put together. The John Steigerwald Show is a production of AM 1250, The Answer, and Salem Media Group. One in seven men is diagnosed with prostate cancer in his lifetime. The good news? When caught early, it can be treated. The bad? All treatment options have side effects, like impotence, urinary leakage,